Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Aussie Farming in Philippines. Well, it might be a bit clearish, maybe, inshallah, inshallah. Well, it's 5.30, it's a busy day today, I've got lots to do, I've been up since 4 o'clock. So I've got up to date on all my comments, so a few of you have asked questions. Oh, here, where is Bing Maria? Well, here she is up here nesting. Hey, bitch. Hey, bitch. Bitch. You, bitch. Ow, ah. Bitch. Hey, bitch. Ah, bitch. Ah. Shh. Ah. Hey, I'll check your eggs out later. Okay. Ah. Uh, so, Big Marie's going. She's going okay. She's still up there. Parrot, still not the best. He doesn't eat much. I don't know what his problem is. So, um, Tixie, maybe he's just getting old. You know? Little young fella here's going all right. Okay, sexy boy. That's it. Right, the reason I'm up so early, like I said, I sleep, sleep like a log until um, before four o'clock. Then um, once you wake up, you're wide awake, can't get back to, back to sleep. You might as well just fucking get up, have a coffee, get all the comments done on. So, like, if these people can spend time to leave a comment to you, least you do is have the decency to reply to them you know so oh that big fence is still working no fucking dogs lately mate after that big dog got zapped and ran away we haven't seen him back since we've heard he's a fucking nuts talk about nuts when sam hit the electric fence and bloody his dick ran right across it jesus did he yell like a little bitch he's being sapped on the nuts well something at the back yeah. So what I'm up now is I've got to measure up the bridge. So I'm hoping to get here before the um, bees come. Because there's a lot of bees there the other day when I was up there. Bastards. So we're going to see if there's any there now. Oh. 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 Alright, can it gone. So what we're going to do, we're going to cement over this, we're going to put um, 3B2s along the side and um, we're just going to cement the bastard. Pour cement over it, the whole heap's of rebar of course. But um, as you know, this used to be bamboo and then we uh, made it wood. So it's got an aqueduct underneath it, which you can see there. It's an aqueduct that runs from there, used to fill up this when this was rice paddocks. But um, I wanted to cement this years ago, but Papa said, Oh no, you can't do it, the water board won't let you. So now that um, it's real estate, I said, get fucked. It's real estate now, we own this land here, so we can do what we want. So um, we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run timber along the sides and rebar, probably four lengths of rebar down the centre, and then every foot all the way across, then fill it up full of cement. I think that will work okay. The problem I had was, because it's all falling apart. There's a fucking shitload of bees here. This area. Oh, oh. See how long this bitch is. Oh. Now, I can't remember how long it was we, when we bought these strips. Does it say 20 feet? 20 feet, so I'll need two 10 foot lengths of timber, plus one on the side. Right. So 20 feet. So how did we join those fucking things on then? We're not doing one length. Hmm. Okay. So she's 20 foot long. I'm gonna go on the inside of that. So, so, uh, go on, bitch. Oh. What's that say there? Five foot four. Oh, that's nearly as tall as me, nearly. Wow. So, five foot four by 20. Alright. I'm gonna work out how much steel I need and uh, see what we can do. 
Right, I got the special spray out. These freaking ants down in here. Fucking bastards, look at them. Oh, you bastards, stay. Don't know if I'll be able to get this in one hit, I'll have to do half and come back because I'll attack me. You see me running away like a little bitch. Bastard, uh. bastards. Gee, as soon as I get bitten, I'm out of here. This stuff kills ants, white ants, kills fucking everything. Even kills me. Shit, William. Oh, I can hate these bastards. Tell you. Oh, I hate these bastards. Shit cam's not working. Shit. Ow. Shit. Shit. Retreat to a decent, decent distance, William. Bastards. I tell you, they fucking piss me. Long stream. Yeah, that will fuck them. Be brave, be brave. Come on, be brave, William. Be brave. Bastards, bastards. Bastards. Oh, there they are. Look all up under here. Look. Oh, ah! Bastards. Get them, Will. Get them. Get the bastards. that settle for a bit and I'll come back later. You see why I can't use that um, wasp spray that Bob gave me because that's for a direct hit on a nest where this is the whole bloody bridge. This is. Right, that air out. Right, retreat to a safe distance. Right. We'll come back. We'll come back after. Right. So I'll come back again tonight actually. I'll check it this afternoon, but if they're still there, I'll come back tonight when they've all gone to bed and I'll get in and spray them all again. Morning chickens. All right, so the bridge is all done. It's in the spraying. I've worked out the list on what I need. So it's gonna be three inches thick by 20 foot long and a meter and a half wide, five foot wide. It's going to be fucking chicken doing. So now, all the animals are done. So what I'm doing now is I'm um, just pulling the cement mixture out, give it a service. I'll give this a complete greasing up. So prepare your shit beforehand, guys. Trust me, prepare it beforehand. So what we do, when we brought this and we were doing the pathways around the house, I was up the back doing something around here and I heard this horrific noise come out from the cement mixer. So I go bolting down there. I was younger and fitter then, of course. And um, shut the machine down. What it was was the bearing here was fucked. So when we brought it and they assembled it, they assembled these because they can imagine this don't come like this. 
right, in the box, okay? So where you buy it from, whatever hardware store or side shop or whatever, they got to assemble all this together, put all the axles on, bolt all the wheels on, put the hopper on, all that shit, the whole lot. And it's up to you whatever size engine you want. So I wanted a 10 horsepower diesel. So we put a 10 horsepower diesel on. You pick whatever you fucking want. The average price is around 80,000. Is probably you're looking at is the average price. It depends upon the quality. Some are different than others. Some have car wheels on them, which is good if you're going to be moving it from place to place. Here, we only just move it around a short distance, less than 50 metres. We only move this one here. The tow bars are different as well. Um, this one here was a fuck up one. We didn't like this one, but there's nothing much we can do about it. And of course, here, this, this would come off with the tightening of the nut. So what I ended up doing, I drilled all the way through there, through the shaft, and out the other side, put a bolt on, so this fucking thing can't come off again. Because the worst thing is, when you're turning down to drop into the um, wheelbarrow, this comes off and the whole lot falls down. We end up with a wheelbarrow full of cement, and the rest of it was all on the deck. So, fuck that shit. Drill through it, and it'll never come off again. Because if it's happened once, it'll happen again. You know what? Right? That's the motto. You know? You get a bad bitch once, you get a bad bitch twice. Right, so... Another hint, right, I said, I'll be greasing all this up. I have a big, big gallon container of grease. Grease everything up. So back to this, when they put it back to, when they put it together, of course they didn't grease the bearings. And that's what fucked out, was the bearings in here. So we went to this, went back to the guy, we said to him, look, when you assembled it, you didn't grease it. And he goes, no, you don't grease in bearings. And it's like, oh, fuck off, stupid. I said, give me a set of bearings out that um, go in there. So he pulled off a set, they were about, I don't know, a few hundred peso each. And I said, okay, these are greasable ones. You have to grease these. They're not sealed. And um, I said, does this cover it under warranty because you didn't do your job? He said, no, no warranty with that, mate. But you do have warranty on your engine because that's a total different, total different um, consignment. And I said, really? I said, well, I've got to buy a chainsaw yet, which I ended up buying, of course, and a brush cutter and a few other tools, chainsaw, brush cutter and uh, mowers. I said, um... So you're not going to honour any warranty at all? He said, no. Nah. I said, okay, let me buy the bearings. Thank you very much. And you've just lost a, yourself a lot of money. You've lost a lot of money because of your fucking pig-headed arrogance. So I said, check, right, that's it. We don't buy from him again. So after that, we went into Deval. We bought everything from Deval. You know, like uh, we're going to buy the air compressor off him, the blower, the chainsaw, the fucking brush cutters, the mowers. Everything we're going to buy off of him that we needed. So... Get fucked. What do you say? Get fucked. Right, so, like I said, grease everything up, guys. So I'll grease all this up, all, all these with a grease gun. All the nipples will get greased up. Oh, grease the nipples up. And diesel fuel's in there, okay? Diesel lasts for fucking 20, 30, 40 years, diesel does. So it's not like um, uh, gasoline, petrol, that after three, four months it starts breaking down, that's fucked. So do always check your oil first because you don't want to... Start it with less oil in there, you've done your engine, well that's it, you're fucked Charlie Brown, just because of laziness, you didn't check your oil. Now another thing on this one here, this one, this one is a pull rope. So I looked at this, and I thought, okay, yes, okay. So I looked at that, and I looked, well your rope fits in there, it's got to go this way. So we were, we were pulling it last time, Alfredo and I, we couldn't get the bitch going. And uh, then I realised, I looked at the pulley again, and this is a universal pulley. Probably can't see it, but it's got. I can hook the rope in this way and pull it, or I can hook the rope in this way and pull it, and the rest they'll just slide off. So it's a universal pulley that they have there. So I looked at this side and went, okay, this is the way we do it, but I was wrong. So anyway, now I've marked it, so I know this is the way to go. So I'll check the air filter out, and we'll see, because it, always check your air filter out, because all the wasp and everything, guys, you know, all the bees and wasps make homes, and um, you start starving your engine, you're like, what the hell's going on? It's all because of something simple. Right, so unscrew that, and look at that, there you go. There you go, look at that, mate. Eh? Look at all the ants in there, see? So this is a paper cartridge with a foam on the outside. What you do with this is you wash the foam out, and you give it a light greasing up with some oil. So put some oil in a rag, put this in. Now remember, this covered in oil is what? Look at these bastards. This in oil is what stops the air, the dirt, from getting in through. Don't put this in dry. They come brand new like this dry, and people think that's how they should be. No, they don't 
oil them up beforehand. So make sure you oil these up before you put them on, before you start up. Right, so I'll go and get some monkey cum for this and we'll s s clean this up. Oh my gosh, here's a bit of shirt cam. Right, I've just blown this out with the air compressor. Now I said, when you buy a machine, these you have these in lawn mowers, you have them in a lot of things, brush cutters and all that. Okay, so give it a good blow out, clean up. If you've got to stick it in some gasoline, stick it in some gasoline. All right, so what do I do? Fresh engine oil. Okay, this is how we're taught to do it at the workshop. Give it a really good rub in, okay? It's the oil that holds the dirt out, guys. Okay, the foam is what holds the oil. All right, and then put it in a rag. And just give it a squish. Just like this. Okay. Gets all the excess oil out of it, still leaves oil in, and there you go. That is one oiled foam filter ready to go. That's how simple it is, guys. All right, guys, so I brought it outside so you can see now a bit better. So there you go, like I said, always take these off, guys. Look at all the ants in there, look at the nest. Now, the reason we're having problems with ants is uh, it's because of the weather at the moment, and it's been like this for months. Now, what is strange, all the, the light sockets, the switches, are becoming infested with ants. And even this um, this light pole here, when we had a brown out, I turned that around for Mary Lou and the family, I.I.'s family, because I was sitting out here on night time with some blankets down, because there's no fans, no nothing. So what I did, I got the, the, um, the pipe wrench and I rotated that light around. And the amount of ants that were living down behind that little gap, millimetre gap behind the round pipe and the square concrete was just amazing. And they're into everything at the moment. Everything you touch has got full of frigging ants. I wish it was money, guys, I'll tell you. I wish it was money. Right, so the idea now is I'll give this a clean out. Give it a clean out and um, we'll be able to start this bitch up. Okay, so this is all clean now. All this is back on again, air filters back on. Remember, trust me guys, I used to see so many of these come in the workshop, they'll be dry as a bone, and the dirt's gone inside and just worn down the piston and the rings, just worn it down. So oil it up first guys, put it in a rag, clean it out, put him back on, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Big shout out to Bob the Builder coming tomorrow. I need two hands for this, she said. I need two hands. Right, working. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Right, well that worked well. So this one decompression on it and you've got to turn it, prime it up, decompression it and give it the biggest hard as yank out. And uh, away she goes. All right guys, all I've got to do now is grease it up and um, we're ready for tomorrow. Worst thing is, don't ever loan your cement mixer out guys. Don't even hire it out. Well check out this, this um, idea that when we finish with our cement mixer and all our scaffolding, and all that stuff that we have in the wheelbarrows and shovels is that when they're building over the back here that we can um, hire them out you know because most of the time they build by they do everything by hand and you know like I never knew that they built our house by hand cement mixing by hand and uh, why, why the guy didn't buy a fucking cement mixer you know and like uh, sell it after the end of the job but um, the amount of time he would have saved on building the house but um, Pino just loved building it by doing everything by hand. You know, one is the money to hire, but these aren't expensive to hire, seriously. But the trouble is, if you hire your gear out, it's not gonna be looked after. It's gonna be treated like shit, and it's gonna come back caked in cement. How do I know? Well, I'll tell you. Right, I'll get them into the shade, because I'm sweaty, hell. It's not even eight o'clock yet. So, um, like I said, that was Chick's idea, we can hire it out. However, good idea, I thought, yes. However, Andy, when he'd done his con uh, container build, he had his um, cement mixer there. And I'll mix it up, then I'll pour it all out onto the ground. They had a box made up. Then I'll pick it up and shovel in um, uh, buckets. Then I'll carry the cement and fucking put it. He bought wheelbarrows, but they never used them because they didn't know how to use them and didn't want to use them because I'm Filipino and I use a bucket. Mentality. But um, the worst thing he had at the end of the day was getting them to keep it clean. And when he hired it out, he said to him, make sure you clean it out every day on the inside, the outside, you know, when you hire it, because they were using, hiring it for a week. And um, when it come back, she was just caked in fucking cement. 
You know, when I went to Earl's place, hey Earl, how are you? When I went to Earl's place, his um, brother-in-law was building a house at the front of their place on the road, entrance road. And uh, I parked because they had the cement mixer blocking the roadway. So I parked the van when I went down to fix up their water pumps or some bloody thing. And I looked, looked at the cement mixer and it was fucked. The inside was just chock-a-block. You know, I said to him, you've got to chisel all that cement out on the paddles, you know, because um, you, you're not washing it out after you use it. They weren't, they weren't washing it out after they use it. So, same as the floor, they mix the cement on the floor, they will start on the, on the dirt, and then after a couple of um, weeks later, they end up with four inches of cement, like we had over here, six inches of cement on the floor. Six inches, and they filled up all that shaded area over there. That used to be a parking spot for us before we built the carport. And when I broke that one down, I had to get the, the drill, the cement drill in to drill all the way down through it, break it all up. And up was over six inches in parts, some were even more. And uh, the cement mixes are the same. So one thing is, if, if you're going to build a cement mix, if you're going to buy a cement mixer, guys, don't loan the fucking thing out because it won't get looked after. Trust me. And I've seen two of them here so far. So the guy over the road was doing a job and he come and seen Chick two weeks ago and said, God, can we hire Will's... Um, cement mixer for a big job we got coming and uh, she said sorry he doesn't loan because you can't wash them out properly so at the end of the day I pressure clean all mine down at the end of the day I pressure clean all the inside the outside and all that but of course here they don't have pressure cleaners so you, you got to remember these things you know you don't say oh they're fucking lazy one is they don't know and two they don't have the equipment you know so you got to you can't think fucking negative towards them all the time all right we're going to get the grease grease out and start greasing up Right, so grease up your nipples, grease your nipples up, oh, I'll stop it. And what I do is I just put grease around and I just, every few inches, I just come and put a big blob all the way along here, all the way around. And when that's running, that will actually mix this up through the whole lot. Nice and sexy. So there you go, guys. That's all ready to go for tomorrow. So I'll push it up over the side over here because I'll need uh, Bob and that to help me tomorrow to drag it into its position. And um, we'll see how we go. All right, back soon. All righty, cement mixer out the way. So next, this is going to be my my float, this one here. So a piece of steel with some um, door handles on the side. I'll grab that and just squish it from left to right, and we smooth out the concrete. A, a plastic float, trowel float type thing. These are the edges. Okay, so you put these along the side, and they make it as sexy as hell. It's sexy as hell. And one of our subscribers sent us one of these, which we haven't used yet. And this puts down a um, a line across. It's like a uh, false join, if you know what I mean. So it depends if I can get this done. Ugh! We'll use these as well. So it'll all depend. Depend upon the bees. Depend upon the bloody bees. So I've got everything ready to cut the um, rebar. So when we go out later, I can just come back and I get stuck into it. I want to get as much as I can done today so that um, if I can cut the wood, join the wood together, drill all the holes on the wood where the rebar is going to be holding it up. And um, so it's three inch wide, three inch um, timber with three inch of concrete. So it'll be about an inch and a half in the center. So I'll just drill through all the, all the wood and run the rebar through. And that will hold it up. Piece of piece, the wood rot out. It's still there. Easy done. Right, so I'm waiting for Chick now for her goats. And uh, we're going to go up and get some... What are you still doing? Let's get the shit out of me, bastards. Right. Fat dog, wake up. Sam, you fat bastard. God, you're a fat bastard. Hey, look at you. You can't even see your dick anymore. Hey, hey. Is that a male dog? <laughs> You're like a big seal, mate. Hey guys, well, part of our getting ready for tomorrow, we're back at our favourite hardware store again. Look, as you can see. So, we're going to be loading up with steel and bags of cement and all the good stuff that we can in here. Hello, dear. So here we go guys, this is the place if you're in this area, definitely mention the Aussie farm in the Philippines and they will look after you very, very well. Okay, let's get our order. 
Okay, so we've got all the sacks of cement, we've got all the steel, we've got everything we need. Thank you, Mum. See you next time, darling. We've got everything we need. So let's go and get some wood now for the outside framing. Oh. This is supposed to be three inches, but um, I don't think so. Right, so the last stop, Chick's getting some veggies and then we can get home, start work again. All right guys, so we've got everything we need. We're right for tomorrow. We've got tie wire to tie it on. We've got everything we need. So um, it's now coming on to 12 o'clock, feed the babies and uh, get out for herding this afternoon. So thanks for watching guys. Please share, subscribe or buy. Tomorrow, big build day. Sounds like a big diddle day. Diddle, diddle. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>